Cain left us yesterday. I greatly enjoyed being with Herman Cain. I still remember a Cuyahoga County Republican picnic with Chairman Robb and Herman Cain in 2012, where he just had me in stitches and the crowd rolling. Our friend Larry Elder, his new movie, Uncle Tom, which has done so well, and if you haven't watched it, you can go to the button at HughHewitt.com and click on it. Use my name for a discount. But within Uncle Tom is contained an interview with Herman Cain, which we've excerpted to turn into a little bit of a memorial tribute to Herman Cain. Here it is, cut number 19. The same day that I started, another white gentleman named Robert started working there also. We had very similar jobs. So the first 12 months, I got outstanding performance four quarters in a row. The second year, outstanding performance four quarters in a row. And Robert got outstanding performance. But Robert was getting his GS salary increase at least two months sooner than me. So I went to Wayne, my supervisor, and said, Robin and I are both doing a great job. He said, yeah. But why is he getting little increases quicker than me? He said, he has a master's degree. I said, oh, it's not because he's white? Nope. He has a master's degree. So you know what I did? I didn't get mad. I went and got me a master's degree. <laughs> there are only four wrongs to this life. Went back. Sat down with Wayne. I said, well, I got a master's degree. I said, the next thing you have open for a promotion. I said, keep me in mind. See you around. And not long after that, they had a special project called Rocket Assisted Projector. They had to have someone who was going to be the GS-13 supervisory mathematician to do the special ballistics on this Rocket Assisted Projector. I got the promotion. And I had eight white people working for me. It was all about performance, not the color of your skin. So since I now had that master's degree and I had proved myself, I got the job. When I decided to leave Dalvin, never forget the department head, and he called me in for an exit interview. And I never forget Russ. I think he's deceased now. He said, you know, you have taught me something. I said, what? He said, I had never worked with a black person before. You taught me don't judge somebody by the color of their skin. That was a memorial to Herman Cain that was drawn from Larry Elder's Uncle Tom. I encourage you to watch it. You can, of course, see the tape of this show over at Facebook, my Facebook page. Barack Obama was giving a eulogy as well yesterday. I think it is unfortunate that he politicized it. It was for the great John Lewis. President Bush gave a six-minute heartfelt salute to John Lewis. President Obama spoke for more than 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. And part of it was just overtly political, uh, including this excerpt in which he calls for ending the filibuster, which, of course, will lead to legislation expanding the Supreme Court to new D.C. statehood, all the crazy left wing stuff. Cut number three, President Obama at John Lewis's funeral yesterday. If politicians want to honor John, and, and, and I'm so grateful for the legacy and work of all 
the congressional leaders who are here. But th th there's a better way than a statement calling him a hero. Right. You want to honor John? Let's honor him by revitalizing the law that he was willing to die for. And by the way, naming it the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, that is a fine tribute. But John wouldn't want us to stop there, just trying to get back to where we already were. Once we pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, we should keep marching to make it even better by making sure every American is automatically registered to vote, including former inmates who've earned their second chance. By adding polling places and expanding early voting and making Election Day a national holiday. So if you are somebody who's working in a factory or you're a single mom who's got to go to her job, and doesn't get time off, you can still cast your ballot by guaranteeing that every American citizen has equal representation in our government, including the American citizens who live in Washington, D.C. and in Puerto Rico. They're Americans. by ending some of the partisan gerrymandering so that all voters have the power to choose their politicians, not the other way around. And if all this takes eliminating the filibuster, another Jim Crow relic, in order to secure the God-given rights of every American, then that's what we should do. Now, Even if we do all this, even if every bogus voter suppression law is struck off the books today, we've got to be honest with ourselves that too many of us choose not to exercise the franchise. <laughs> too many of our citizens believe their vote won't make a difference, or they buy into the cynicism that, by the way, is the central strategy of voter suppression to make you discourage. Do you, do you get the sense that the president, uh, former President Obama, not going to miss a chance to miss a chance? Uh, he even got even more political, cut number two at the John Lewis funeral. But today, we witness with our own eyes police officers kneeling on the necks of black Americans. George Wallace may be gone. But we can witness our federal government sending agents to use tear gas and batons against peaceful demonstrators. All right. Uh, Andy No was on with uh, Stuart Bernie yesterday, I believe. Yes. Cut number 16, talking about those peaceful protesters. Uh, it's not a myth, and I wish Mr. Nadler would come out here so he can see with his own eyes and, and hear the explosions that uh, are being thrown by these uh, violent uh, extremists. So day after day now, for, for more than two months, we're having people carry out daily violent protests, and it's been getting worse in that the, the weapons have been... Um, and they're moving now to to potentially kill and maim federal officers. Have it, wait a minute, that's important stuff. You're on the ground. You are in Portland. What's this about weapons? Tell me more. So a lot of the weapons are intentionally designed to look innocuous, things like water balloons or water bottles or laser sticks. But um, as Fox News uh, has reported, uh, these lasers are unregulated. They're by them. 
through eBay or from China or other websites. And they're very high powered in that they're meant to actually blind and damage the eyes. I, I've had them directed at me in the course of my undercover work. Uh, you can't see anything when there's direct, when one is directed at you, much less a dozen of them. And the water balloons are filled with things such as paint. It's used to blind uh, police and then may remove a helmet or they can't see. And then if they remove a the helmet, then somebody else will launch a ball. A little from- bit different than President Obama's description. I think you would agree. When we come back, the case for Trump in 2020, uh, you'll want to condense this and post it. Stay tuned to The Hugh Hewitt Show. 